Hey gang, we're in Miami. We are at a cemetery called Southern Memorial Park, north side of Miami, I believe it is. And I'm here to find the grave of a man who's married to a woman who committed a crazy murder. Not a crazy murder, 1920s, roaring 20s. Shouldn't say a crazy murder. It was a murder that was in the news. It was like big time in New York. Her name was Catherine Danino. Yeah, it all started out as Italian immigrants, as many coming here, coming to New York. She was 12 years old at the time. Her father's name was Antonio Skippa. Her mother's name was Maria. And she had three siblings, an older brother, Salvatore, two sisters, Julia and Rose. Now, they worked very hard in this new land of opportunity. And things were going well, but after 10 years, around 10 years, Father, Father Antonio passed away. Now there was no breadwinner, nobody to, nobody to make money. Things were getting very tough. So the widow Maria, mom, she turned her home into a boarding house. And, in addition, she invited an uncle to board with them to get more money. His name was Luigi Fino. Luigi. Very young and handsome, suave guy. And he was working here in America to send money back to his own wife and children back in Italy. He was a tile setter. So everything was getting back to good shape. Things were stable. There was food on the table. That is until there was a shocking event. A shocking event that happened one night that changed everything. Luigi happened to be alone with Catherine and with no warning he attacked her and he had his way with her by force. In the process, he smashed her porcelain doll, her treasured porcelain doll, her beautiful porcelain doll. Mother Maria came back from work. She came in the room, of course, you know, working late. And there she finds Catherine laying on the floor unconscious. She's just sprawled out, and there's the porcelain doll, her porcelain doll, all smashed. Well, she revives her daughter, and Catherine tells of the horrible event, everything that happened. And boy, Maria is not happy. Of course, she goes to Luigi, she says, get out of here, pack your bags and get out. And he does. I don't know what he expected to happen, but he was gone. Now, not long after that, they discovered that Catherine was pregnant. And Luigi found out about it. And he said he wanted to come back, support the family. And Mother Maria finally gave in, let him come back. But things were too uncomfortable. It was, it was just really odd. So what Maria did is she told Luigi, and she told everybody that the baby had died. And of course he was horrified to hear that. So then he really, left for good. She didn't even tell Catherine. Catherine thought the baby was dead, but she had sent the baby away. A way to live with someone else. Of course, none of it was reported back in those days. It was just a big 
scandal, you know, the family name. So a few years passed and again things got better and Catherine met somebody. She met a handsome guy. He was Italian, his name, Rocco Danino. Fell in love, got married. But it wasn't long after the marriage. Guess what happens? Yeah, Luigi comes back in the picture, but not in a way that you would imagine. She starts getting blackmail letters from him. If you don't send me money, I'm going to tell your husband. And everyone's going to know the shame, your shame. So she ignores the letters, as she should have done. And he just keeps sending them. Rocco sees it. It's like he's mortified. But what he does is he talks to her, and they say, they together decide to move to Evanston, Illinois. Let's get out of here. Let's start over. And that's where they go, Chicago. Evanston is a suburb. We've been at Calvary Cemetery there on the lake. That's Evanston. So yeah, they go to Evanston and they start anew. And the letters keep coming. And now it's all about Pasquale. Pasquale is the older brother, and Rocco is mortified that Pasquale might find out. Now, that would be the worst, because, again, the family name. And Pasquale was a tough character, and who knows what would happen. They got in a big argument about it, and... Rocco kind of lost his cool, and he, he asked Catherine to leave. He's like, get out. And she did, surprisingly. She did. But she said, before I get out, you need to give me money, and you need to give me some significant money. And of course, he complied. Why did she want the money? She wanted the money to buy a gun. And what she was going to do was go to New York and she was going to stalk Luigi. She was going to get him. So she goes to New York and she has a contact there, somebody who's giving her tips on where he's at, when he's at. She's got a schedule. She's stalking him. She's in disguise. She's got a schedule. And he goes to the barber shop you know, every couple of weeks, right? Every three. They got that pinned down. Finally, the informant comes and says, He's coming today. So she goes there in hiding and she waits. And she waits and she waits and she waits. She waits for like nine hours in the shadows by the barber shop. And then Luigi finally shows up. She sees him. So, she kind of walks up behind him as he's about to go in the barber shop. And he turns around, he sees her. She's got the gun pointed right at him. He doesn't know who she is, he's in shock, but he's about to turn to run and she shoots him in the chest. And as he turns, she shoots him again. And then, as he's laying on the ground, she walks up to him, looks down, and gives him the coup de grace, right to the head. Right. She takes him out. And what do you think happened? Well, yeah, bystanders, they, they at first run, but she just settles to the ground in despair and they're all watching and she says all she can say is he broke my doll he broke my doll and Luigi is dead 
well, this would go into the into the trial phase and the newspapers. It was big. Things were looking bad. She surely would be convicted. But when the news finally came out and evidence about the blackmail letters from Luigi, everything kind of turned around. Public sympathy shifted in Catherine's favor. The newspapers were fawning over her, if you will. And another character who we've talked about before, Henry K. Thaw, remember the guy who killed Stanford White in New York, he came forward and he said, I've got an open checkbook for you, for your defense. And everybody was just rallying behind her. So she ended up getting off. She got a suspended sentence. And the judge was even sympathetic. Everybody was. And she did not go to prison. Amazingly, during the trial, a researcher had found out that her baby, the baby with Luigi, had been adopted by an elderly couple. That is who Maria gave the baby to. It was a boy, still a toddler. They brought him to her, but Catherine kind of recoiled. She couldn't relate. She was detached from the little boy, she said was taken from her so young. She was, again, 12 years old. But then it was revealed that Catherine was now expecting another child. Of course, that would be with Rocco. And Rocco, in the meantime, is completely mortified. He is like my wife is a murderer and she's begging him please come visit me come take me save me from all of this these newspapers all these people he's like wants nothing to do with her but he softened up of course after she got off in the public sympathy and he finally you know he did the right thing and all at once he like came to her with christmas presents and joyful and you know he, he did the right thing in the end but that family name, the family name back then, boy, that, that just took precedence over everything. Well, they would continue to have a life together and have a good life. They would have, I, I think it was two more children. And that's the end of the story. Now, when I came here to find the grave of Rocco, I found it, but I did not find Catherine. And that's what's perplexing. That is what's perplexing. His grave is right here next to another woman with, I believe, has a f Italian name. Her name's Anna Raimondi. And as you look, they're about the same age, lived about the same time, but Deb says, my ancestry helper, that there's no relation. And where is Catherine? If they lived this life together, this happy life and descendants and kids, what am I missing? If anyone knows, let us know. Maybe, maybe Anna is, maybe Anna is related find it odd that there's spaces to the right and left open appearing appearing to be open this is a double space here so don't know but this is Rocco's grave and I would love to find Catherine's Anyway, that's the story, guys. I wanted to tell you that the story I heard about on a, another channel, it's called Obsolete Oddities. You've probably heard of it.
and he's an acquaintance now. We've communicated on other things peer to peer, and I gotta tell you, this man and that channel, Obsolete Oddities, has, I love, it's one of my favorite, and I'll put the links in, and you can hear this story on his channel because he shows fabulous vignettes, these interludes of amazing artwork, and he, it tells a story like a, like a storyteller in a book. In the 1920s, a murder case caught the attention of New Yorkers. A young Italian immigrant called Catherine De Nino shot and killed the man. And that's the way the channel is designed. And it, I, I will tell you, I will admit, he has inspired me on my channel on certain episodes as to bring, bringing out my artistic side. He's inspired me to do, you know, he, I will flat out say, you know, I, I've, I've gotten some great ideas watching some of his creations to do some of my own things. It's kind of led me a little bit of a different path, like the Kellers. These interludes, I love it. So anyway, kudos, go check his channel out. I mean, we don't know each other that well, I'm just throwing this out there. Anyway, that's it for today. Stay safe, everybody.